our last video on ethical thinking. I bet you're going woohoo. Okay, so what you're going to do, all of you, no matter whether you're in my um, in class on campus or whether you're online, uh, we'll be submitting this online because I have to show that every student submitted this assignment online because they do some assessment with that. So what you'll do is you'll go to the assignment, um, the ethical thinking assignment, you'll download this, you'll download this copy and then you will on your computer you will type in all your answers and then you will click on the link just like you had before and then submit it to the website and I will grade it online. It doesn't matter where I have you in class, it'll be graded online. Okay, so what I'm going to do is go through these questions. I'm going to show you where on the tug sheet you can find the basic information that you need. And then I'm going to go through what I'm looking for and then what I'm not looking for. So what I would recommend is listen to this once, but then listen to it again as you're doing the questions so you can hear, okay, what um, I'm looking for and the detail I'm looking for. And again, and I've said this probably 20 times in the last four videos, this is supposed to hurt. Okay, and it's 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 good though because we want to stretch your brain just like you stretch a muscle and warm it up. We want to do the same thing with your brain. And um, if you get into this process of thinking this way, and if you take classes, uh, some of you are at VU, but if you're not at VU, if you're in the high school class, uh, you'll be doing this in several classes. So once you get some practice here, hopefully that will help. Okay, so here are the questions. Um, I define a paragraph for you. I give you minimum numbers. That doesn't mean, you know, oh my gosh, I have to stop at two. People that do well on this assignment usually feel like they're rambling. They'll tell me I'm rambling. Usually if you're rambling though, you're thinking. I mean, some people ramble and don't say anything, but most of the time when you ramble through this assignment, you're actually adding more and you're thinking about your thinking and that's not a bad thing. So don't make it like I'm going to get to two paragraphs and then I'm going to stop. If you've got more to talk about, then talk about it, okay? Talk about it. Okay, so the first question is explain the ethical dilemma or what is the ethical question and explain why it is the dilemma that must be analyzed. Do not tell me it's an ethical dilemma because it has more than one solution. That's the number one wrong answer I get from that. So if we go back to your tug sheet, that first question is being looked at right here. What is your ethical question and then why is it important? So it's why does society have to look at this question? Why is it something that we are looking at? If it wasn't important to society, I wouldn't use it as an example. All right, I wouldn't be doing it in class. So that's where you're looking. And again, this is an outline, so you're going to have to expand on it. Okay, expand on why is this question important? This is just an outline. So that's question number one. Again, minimum two paragraphs. Again, if you take longer, it's fine. Now, number two, using the eight key questions, which do you find most important when looking at this particular question? You need to explain why you chose the question. Just don't give me a list of three questions and not explain why you chose them. Okay. I also don't want you to discuss all eight. Remember, we've talked about this several times. Not every question is relevant to the issue, to every issue. So why did you choose the question? Why do you think it's the most important or the, mo the two or three that are most important? So you've got to tell me why. If you just list three, you're going to get very little credit because basically all you did was take the sheet and write down three. Why did you pick those questions? Think about the discussion we had in class. Right? And think about discussions that are going on online on why those questions seem to be the most relevant. Okay? Number three, discuss your viewpoint on the issue and how your answers to the eight key questions influenced your thoughts. So what you're going to be looking at is you're going to go back to the tug sheet. Okay? So we've got the, we have the shades of gray, the side, the side. What is your viewpoint on the issue? Okay, what is your viewpoint on the issue? So after looking at all the facts, answering the eight key questions, uh, looking at stakeholders, looking at everything we looked at with the sheet, and everything you've read, what is your viewpoint on this issue? Now I have students tell me, I don't have a viewpoint. And then they just write that in their paper. If you do that, that's pretty much going to get you an F. Okay, so you've got to have a viewpoint. You've got to have you've got to have an opinion on this issue. Okay? Too many people don't form opinions 
and there may be weaknesses in opinions, but you've got to start to form opinions. Now, I shouldn't have said that. Our politicians have too many opinions. They're not uh, good thinkers necessarily, but you have to have a viewpoint. You may have to look more up and find more shades of gray. There's got to be somewhere where you're comfortable with that issue. So discuss your viewpoint and how your answers to the eight key, qu key questions influenced your thoughts. So you need to talk about which of the eight key questions were most important, what your answers were to those eight key questions, and how they helped you formulate, how they helped you formulate your viewpoint, okay? How they helped you formulate your viewpoint. Okay, number four, how have your life experiences influenced your formation of your viewpoint and your answers to the key questions? People have trouble with this, especially the first time you do it. So you have these questions that are the most important, and then you have answers to those questions. Why do you have those answers? Okay. Now again, a lot of you are younger, so you haven't had the same life experiences, someone that's older than you has, but why do you think the way you do? Why do you answer that question the way that you do? Okay. Now, let's go back to my example of the growth hormone. Okay. When I look at the question outcomes, okay, why do I have the viewpoint that, you know, I'm really concerned about the outcomes, they don't have the, if they don't know what, what a long-term effect is, why do I have that answer? I have that answer because my degree is in physiology. Okay? My college degrees are both in physiology. I teach physiology. So when I'm thinking through this, the first thought that comes to mind is the fact that, you know, is, there's no science behind it. There's no science to support the fact that this is a safe thing to do in kids that already have normal levels of growth hormone. So that's why I answer the question the way that I do. Now, if the question is empathy, do I have empathy for those kids that are shorter? Yeah, I do. And why? Because I'm short. Okay, so that is why I'm answering the questions I wait, the way that I do. Now, the outcomes question is more important to me than the empathy question. But why do I think the way I do about empathy? Because I do understand what it's like to be the shortest kid. I mean, there's advantages. When we lined up for pictures, I always got to go first. But I also played basketball. And so there were obviously distinct disadvantages why I was playing basketball. Okay. So why do you think the way that you do? Your parents are going to influence you. Your religion is going to influence you. And religion is a fair game when it comes to what's affecting your thinking. That is a perfectly valid okay, reason to think a certain way as long as you understand what your religious beliefs are. If you tell me that you're Catholic and the Catholics think this and that's it, then you're not going to get as much credit for it. You need to really look into what your religious beliefs are think about certain issues. Now with the short thing and the growth hormone, they might not have a lot of viewpoints. But when you get into some of the designer babies and the genetics kind of stuff, your religion may influence you. But you're going to have to explain, don't just say, my religion says this and that's the end of it. Okay, you're going to have to go more in depth than that. I'll give you an example. Um, we were doing an issue on embryonic stem cells. And one of the, uh, my friends is a Mormon. And so I went up to him and I asked him, I said, what does the Mormon church think about embryonic stem cells? And he didn't know. Okay? He didn't know that he didn't have the answer, which that's fine. But what he did is he went and found the answer. Okay. And just because you're a certain religion, he doesn't always agree with everything the Mormon church says. So you have to question it, but you have to be very specific on why and how the religion may affect your viewpoint and your answers. Okay. So number five is what factual information supports your viewpoint. So again, if we go back, if we go back to our little sheet, here are facts. Okay, so your facts need to be accurate, but you, you should find facts, some facts that may support your viewpoint. If you can't find scientific facts that support what you're saying, that's going to be a weakness. Okay, but there has, should be facts that support your viewpoint. There should be facts that support your viewpoint. So that Again, you'll have references that you'll put in there. Um, if you notice up here, it says you have to have four of your own references. The fact area is one area where you're going to have to use have to use those references. Okay, number six is which stakeholders support your viewpoint and how do their answers to the key questions influence their viewpoint? So you're going to go look again back here. What are the which of these stakeholders is going to agree with your viewpoint? Why? probably because of the way they answer the eight key questions, so you just need to discuss how they would look at those eight key questions. Now, there can be stakeholders. The same stakeholder can be on both sides of the issue, so you would need to support how that stakeholder 
the answer to the eight key questions or the one key question that you think is most important supports your viewpoint on that section. Again, expand on your answers. All right, number seven and number eight. These are other than people not discussing why they think the way they do or why they answer the questions the way they do, seven and eight are the two kind of sticky questions that people get stuck on or don't go into enough, uh, give me enough information. So if your viewpoint was accepted by society, if society said that your viewpoint or solution to this issue was the way we're going to go, what would be the good consequences and the bad consequences. There's going to be implications. Now remember back to determining what an ethical question was. An ethical question has a variety of solutions. Each with have have each solution has their strengths and their weaknesses. So what you need to do here, now I'm going to tell you it's really easy. It's very easy to write the good things about your viewpoint. We're very good at that. It's like a human thing. Well, this is what I think and this is why I'm right. Okay. And you could write on, you could write six paragraphs on why you're right and why your viewpoint will only have good things. Okay. What takes some thinking and what takes some maturity in your thinking is to be able to look at your viewpoint and understand that yes, there are consequences that are negative. And that's what I'm really going to be looking for in this question. I've had students that say, my viewpoint's right, this is why, and there's nothing wrong with it, it's perfect. If that was the answer to the question, we would not be using it as an issue. So you need to look at the side effects. Think of it as the side effects of your viewpoint. If you need to, you're typing this away, and you're like, okay, I've got all the good things. I need the bad things. Go into another room and become another person, a person that believes the opposite, and think about what the consequences are, okay? Think about what the consequences that, the negative consequences of your solution. There has to be some or we would not be talking about it as an ethical issue, okay? All right, so that, um, like I said, takes a little bit of, it takes a little bit of inner thought, all right? Writing things down, just spend some time with it. Number eight, Number eight is the other sticking point. Describe the viewpoint or a viewpoint on the issue that differs from yours. Explain the facts, stakeholders, and their responses to the eight key questions that support the opposing viewpoint. Discuss the implications and consequences if each of the different viewpoints were accepted by society. Come up with an opposite viewpoint. Okay. When I read this answer to your question, if you've done a good job, I should think that you have the opposing viewpoint. You talk about how the opposing viewpoint would answer the questions, what stakeholders would, would support an opposing viewpoint, what facts support an opposing, opposing viewpoint, and so on. This is very hard for people to do. It's almost like, there's got to be a psychological term for it, I don't know it. It's almost like if you think you write everything down, that I'm going to think you believe that or you're going to change your mind. Okay. And maybe you will, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. So you really need to sit down. This is the other one. Write your viewpoint, type, type, type. Go into another room. Become a person that believes the opposing viewpoint and write question eight as if you were a person who totally disagreed with your viewpoint and agreed with an opposing viewpoint. Okay. Do not write, well, this is what they think, but they're wrong. They think this, but that's just stupid, and I've had that before. I don't want to hear that you think it's wrong. I want to hear, I want to read the opposing viewpoint. I want to read this question as if you believe the opposing viewpoint. The more you do that, the better you will do on this assignment. Okay. So let me go through this again, the sticking points. The sticking points tend to be not thinking about why you think the way you do. You should be thinking about your thinking. Okay, thinking about your thinking. Why do I think that way? Okay, why do I think that way? If you don't know why you think that way, then you got to figure out why you think that way. That's part of being a good thinker, is sitting there thinking about why you think the way you do. So if you're like, I don't know why I think that way, well, you got to figure it out. Okay, that's part of this process. That's part of maturing as a thinker. I've said the word think a lot. The other sticking point is number seven, understanding the uh, negative consequences of your viewpoint. All right, to stakeholders and to society as a whole. And then number eight is a big sticking point. 
writing an opposing viewpoint as if you believed it okay as if you believed it so again this is not easy and I know that I've tried to give you as many guidelines as I can um, but it comes down to you sitting down if you want me to look at it I will be more than happy to do that if it's online we'll talk about how you can contact me um, you can email me um, you just got to give me a little bit of time I'll give you some feedback but you've got to sit down and you've got to think through this All right so work on your thinking talk to people you know again you'll be a better person if you can go through this um, one reason I like doing this assignment even though we have to do it but I like doing it is because most of you have grown up in a political system where we do not have good critical thinkers there is one way it's only that way and there is no other way so hopefully we'll get you guys thinking we'll get a generation thinking and become good politicians and actually start to talk to each other and compromise and seeing strengths and weaknesses to everybody's viewpoint not always agreeing with people that's fine but being open to changing your mind so you're going to find online um, I put a small podcast on it you might want to listen to it I'm not telling you you have to change your mind but I want you to feel comfortable no matter what your viewpoint is on what issue to think and to change your mind okay to change your mind and or learn why you believe what you believe or learn that what you believe you know what that's not really as valid as I thought it's okay to think and it's okay to change your mind so I'll throw that on there so you can listen to that okay so due dates and things for this will be online or I'll talk about it in class depending on um, which method you are taking the course so that is going through these questions okay. make sure you use references within the questions and then cite them at the end so I can find them um, make sure they're good references and if you have any questions just let me know so let's put your little thinking caps on you can even get a little baseball hat put a little baseball hat on and start thinking and then you can take a break take it off give your brain a little break and then start over again all right if you have any questions let me know